I tell you, this is really like a great historic moment for myself. And uh, I'm glad that I am one of the contributors to this uh, great historic uh, event. Well, I've been interested in my background, my Okinawan culture, and I'm really glad to have this center now so I can learn more about my, my ancestry. 1990 marks the 90th anniversary of the Okinawan immigration to Hawaii. The ties that bind the Okinawan community are as strong as ever, as it is displayed here at the grand opening of the Hawaii Okinawa Center. Countless hours have been spent in preparation for this day by devoted Okinawans here in Hawaii as well as in Okinawa. Pride in Okinawa and pride in being Okinawan appears to be what fuels the desire to perpetuate the culture here in Hawaii. I want to make one point very clear. With only 40,000 Okinawans living here in the state of Hawaii, less than 4% of the total population, I have to admit that this ethnic group has probably contributed more, when you consider the numbers that we have here, than any other ethnic group to the growth of this state. I say that without any qualifications. The long-awaited grand opening of the Hawaii Okinawa Center was held on June 16, 1990. Though there were early morning showers, the sky began to clear as the Okinawans from Hawaii and abroad gathered at the site in Waipio. The Hatagashira banners, representing native towns and villages of the Hawaii Okinawa immigrants, soared tall and proud as firecrackers and shishimai lions joined the parade. At center stage, young local musicians performed while dancing to the drumbeat, adding a flair to the festivities. Local ladies doing the freestyle dance, the kachashi, were joined by a jovial group of visitors from Okinawa. With almost 4,000 people in attendance, the stage was set for the grand opening ceremony which was to follow. This has been a very exciting project, I know, for the Okinawan community in Hawaii, but it has also been of special, of a special interest for our family, because Lynn was uh, one of the co-chair persons to head the, uh, the building program, and I can assure you that she took this responsibility very, very seriously. Dignitaries, representing both Hawaii and Okinawa, were present, and a full 90 minutes of the opening ceremony was broadcast live via satellite by Ryukyu Broadcasting in Okinawa. Both Buddhist and Hawaiian priests offered blessings, while the young, the elderly, and the frail were not to be left out of the festivities. The Hawaii Okinawa Center stands as a tribute and a symbol of sacrifice to all the early Okinawans who arrived in Hawaii 90 years ago. The center was officially opened with the untying of the mailile. The honors were accorded to two first-generation Okinawans, Stephen Nagamine and Chieko Takushi. The first steps into the brand new center were taken by the Issei, who were being honored that day. 780 Issei, some of them escorted by their children or grandchildren, Thank entered the main hall. Among the greeters were the governor of Okinawa himself, Junji Nishime. Venerable leader of the Okinawa Hawaii Club for expatriates in Okinawa, Kamesuke Nakamura and his wife were also present to join in the ceremonies. There were gifts for each of the Issei, and certificates of appreciation were presented by the Okinawa Prefectural Government.
We elaborated in the previous episode of how willingly native Okinawans had donated to the fundraising campaign. Donations were still being accepted that day as Wayne Miyahira, UOA president, was offered more gifts. Um, what does the center mean to you? Well, the center means a, um, uh, a culmination of our efforts for the last five to six years of, of the recognition of everything that um, our Issei's has brought, they have brought to Hawaii and had given us as a foundation for our, uh, the good life that we have here as a, as, a, as a U.S. citizen and as a Hawaii citizen. So that's what we cherish most and what we really appreciate in what they've done for us. The idea of building the Hawaii Okinawa Center was the conceived in 1980 long, as told by Ed Kuba. Back in 1980 when Governor Junji Nishime from Okinawa was passing through Hawaii on his way back from South America and he talked story with us uh, for a while especially with us younger leaders uh, in the community and he pointed out to us that the first Okinawan immigrants that left the motherland came to Hawaii thereafter they went to the mainland US, Canada South America, the Philippines, and other countries around the Pacific Basin. And he asked, you folks are the old, oldest Okinawan community outside of Okinawa. How come you don't have an Okinawa cultural center? He had just dedicated one in South America, a much younger community than ours. And he was amazed that we, we didn't have one yet. So it made us younger leaders kind of scratch our heads and try to figure out, you know, what's going on? And at that point, we started up. We, we got a group of young professionals led by uh, Maurice Yamasato, the current president of UOA and uh, the architect for Hawaii Okinawa Center, Stan Takamini, Gary Mija, and a bunch of other younger leaders to get together and try to get this project off the ground. It took several years to corral the kind of organization leaders that we needed. Back in 1986, that's when we made the serious decision to go for it. We are also thankful for the successful fund drive that has taken place because we know that you were our leader, our co-worker and our supporter. And today as we have Groundbreaking ceremonies for the Hawaii Okinawa Center was held on March 19, 1989. Thousands of Okinawans across the state gathered in Waipio to celebrate a milestone event in Hawaii immigrant history. Along with the officers of the executive committee, which had been formed for the center, people of all walks of life came to witness the groundbreaking. From 3,500 households here in, here in Hawaii, the average gift comes out to about $1,000, $1,000 per household. That's the kind of support that we're getting. Those designated the conventional task of digging into the ground went through the motions donning hard hats and holding shovels. Included in this group were Hawaii Okinawa Center executives, politicians and bankers, along with Issei Stephen Nagamine and Chieko Takushi, young musicians Debbie Nakamoto and her son Dennis, and representatives of the general membership. There was a strong feeling of brotherhood and charity amidst the fun and laughter. You may have noticed by now that the same group of groundbreakers were also present at the grand opening on June 16. What an impressive display of pride and joy as helicopters hovering above showered thousands of fragrant blossoms over the revelers. This is one day that party lines and politics were cast aside and the rule of the day was simply goodwill and friendship. Completion of the center had originally been scheduled for 10 months after the groundbreaking. But with a few minor snags and delays, the entire project had proceeded in a timely and orderly manner. Fifteen months later, 
in June 1990. The groundbreaking was already history. Well, I feel very touched that so many uh, ESAs came out to see this program and, you know, to see uh, tears in the eyes, you know, and uh, especially I feel thankful for the people of Hawaii for the support they gave us, the big corporations and, and the, uh, all the small donations that made up the difference, you know, and uh, I think people working together sort of created this togetherness that, or the unity, yeah? And it's all, not only the Okinawans, it's also the non-Okinawans who helped. And uh, so this is a project for the state of Hawaii. Three, three. Over the past three weeks, we have extolled the virtues of the Okinawans in Hawaii and lauded their accomplishments over the past 90 years. Their Naichi counterparts emigrated to Hawaii 15 years earlier in 1885. Are there differences in these two groups of immigrants? Dr. Franklin Odo, ethnic studies professor, makes these comparisons. If we compare the Uchinanchu groups with their Naichi counterparts, and this is how I pre uh, perceive the situation where the Naichi um, Kenjinkai were Japanese speaking and were not succeeded really by an English speaking membership, mm -hmm. talking about the leaders, while the Okinawans went directly into English. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you comment on this? Yeah, I, you know, this is something that I think nobody's really been able to explain to me, you know, why this is true. Y if you take the two cases separately, I think it's, it's possible to see that the Nisei, um, the Naichi Nisei in the uh, different Kenjinkai or yes. the Renkyo, um, trying to hold on to uh, status and power and really not being as foresighted I think and thinking ahead far enough and for some reason the Okinawan leadership was able to see that if they wanted to maintain a uh, community organization like that that they needed to turn over the reins uh, of leadership to younger people and to create a system in which people could come into that with with energy and um, you know with uh, enthusiasm and be given um, real leadership roles, not just, you know, once in a while. I think the Naichi groups are beginning to do that now, but it's pretty late. While there is only a 15-year difference in the arrivals of the Naichi versus Okinawan immigrants, there seems to be a lot of difference in the way the two groups are headed in preserving um, ethnicity. Does 15 years make such a difference? Yeah, I don't think it's the years. I think it's something else, you know. Um, one way of getting at this is to, is to take a look at the difference, say, between the mainland um, Naichi, the Nikkei community on the mainland, I think is much more enthusiastic and far ahead of the Hawaii um, Nikkei community in terms of maintaining its traditions. Like, you know, the Japanese American National Museum, um, um, Japanese American Library in San Francisco, a lot of the, even the Japanese American Citizens League um, Matsuri things in Little Tokyo, San Francisco, um, they're much more conscious of perpetuating uh, Japanese American customs and culture than I think we are in Hawaii. And part of that I think is just being um, learning earlier than us that the culture is in, in jeopardy in the sense that uh, children outmarry or lose lose um, the language or the culture or um, are assimilated into something else and so there needs to be they know that there needs to be a conscious effort to protect this the Okinawans have known this for a while and so they've made um, I think conscious efforts and I think the leadership has realized this for maybe a couple decades at least where uh, the Nisei and older Sansei in the, in the uh, Naichi community, I think are just beginning to understand this in Hawaii. So we're, in that sense, we're way behind the, the Naichi community in Hawaii is way behind the mainland Naichi community. The Okinawan community in Hawaii is way ahead of anybody else. featured a lot of song, dance, and culture, 
which enriched the lives of Okinawans both in Hawaii and Okinawa. We are convinced that music has always been a part of their lives to the extent that music magistrates were dispatched as envoys to the Bakufu government in Edo in mid-18th century Japan. What is real life like in Okinawa? Forty-five years have passed since the war ended, and the U.S. military's presence is still felt on the island, now along with Japanese big business. Okinawa was returned to Japan in 1972, but is still on the bottom of the scale in per capita income and highest in unemployment. Tourism is a major industry in the islands, as there are no big industries in capital, as in mainland Japan. However, much of the prime resort land is being bought up by mainland Japanese investors and investments are being made in the expansion of major resorts and golf courses. A couple years ago, the resort hotels really came into the island and our structure of the industries has been changing. And I'm very happy to see this type of resort hotels coming into in the island and change the, our uh, image as well as uh, our industrial you know, the distribution of the marketing and uh, hopefully we'd like to develop more and more uh, this type of resort business in the future. Is it safe to assume that all this capital or most of the capital is from mainland Japan? Yes, it is. I don't think uh, the Okinawa as a single in, uh, you know, company can not afford to uh, build something like this. And uh, in that respect, uh, we have to depend on uh, Japanese mainland uh, investors. And I think in terms, uh, it's going to be uh, good for the uh, island. About two and a half million tourists from Japan visit Okinawa yearly, up from 1.9 million four years earlier. Okinawans are divided on the pros and cons of future development, some complaining that few of the tourist yen end up in their pockets. Okinawa, from what we can see, is about 20 or 25 years behind Hawaii. And they're getting to a point where development is starting to get real big. Uh, they're being uh, flooded by, um, let's say, development companies from mainland Japan. Hawaii, way back when, we were flooded by development companies from the mainland U.S., and then more recently from, uh, from Japan. Okinawa right now, from what, I, from what we can see, is from mainland Japan. Now, we're hoping that development will be good for uh, Okinawa. Economically, it's going to create a lot of jobs. It'll raise their standard of, li of living, which is what Okinawa needs. But then on the other hand, we hope that they can learn from uh, Hawaii's experience and try to avoid uh, the pitfalls, the problems that were created by uh, development. <laughs> After graduation, I hope to be an architect. Construction does not seem to be a viable industry in Okinawa because it has its ups and downs, so I can't speak positively about the future. After I graduate, I want to leave Okinawa for two to three years, then come back and settle down. I really like living in Okinawa because I can relax here. We mentioned earlier that not a trace of post-war devastation remains, especially among the young. From the outside, Okinawa can probably pass as a typical Japanese prefecture. Mass media has played a large role in indoctrinating the youth to conform with their mainland counterparts. When we visited the University of the Ryukyus, we saw a typical college campus. How does the Okinawan youth feel about tradition and their Hogan dialect? a topic which has been widely discussed lately. Okinawan culture and tradition are very different from mainland Japan. I'd like to preserve the uniqueness of it. We don't speak the Okinawan dialect at home, but I wish we did. We do eat Okinawan food, though, most of the time. We eat Okinawan-style food on New Year's, but other than that, we usually don't. I feel that I come from a typical Okinawan family because we observe all festivals and holidays. When I become a wife and mother, I plan on continuing these observances. I like Okinawa because everyone here is kind and I like to take it easy, so it fits my character. 
The use of Hogen, or dialect, is a hotly debated topic in Okinawa. The students we spoke with did not seem to be overly concerned about their language, but their elders and educators have a lot to say on the subject. もう、あの、ほとんど標準語でテレビの普及で、あの、標準語になってしまうような感じがいたしますが、それは、あの、どんな意味を示していますでしょうか。これは、あの、やはり情報、新しい情報と言いますか。今、沖縄の生活の中の
It is the Okinawans who enjoy the longest lifespan. Ten out of every 100,000 people who are centenarians are Okinawan, while only 1.5 out of 100,000 are Japanese. Even in Hawaii, when centenarians of Japanese ancestry are honored, many Okinawan issei are among them. Is longevity attributed mainly to good genes? Or is it a combination of factors such as good climate and a carefree environment? これもその一つだと思います。そうです。ええ。あの、沖縄の方の長寿の秘訣はやはりこの食生活にあるのでしょうか。私はもう真っ先に他にも言えると思うんですけどね。これだけでは無しにいろんな条件がよく言われております
上手に調理して食べ尽くしてしまうというのがいわゆる沖縄の豚肉料理を自慢にしてるわけなんです。例えばあのもちろん肉ですよね、はい、肉はあのラフテーだとかご存知でしょうか、はい、ラフテーだとか、まあ、あの甘辛く煮た味噌で煮たりするのもありますが、はい、あの代表的なラフテーとかそれからあのミヌダルといいましてこれも豚肉料理で蒸し物になりますちょっと珍しい沖縄としてはあのそういう料理もございますしそれからあの肉そのもの以外に、まあ、あの肉のまあ、同じ肉としたらもう一つあのあばら骨をね早期分にのおつゆという早期分にも大変おいしくいただきますしそれから内臓類をよく食べるんですね代表的なものに中身の吸い物というのがございますね豚の,あの胃腸みんな一緒にしたものとかそれから豚の血までも使いまして。イリチー料理というあの炒め煮の,のがありますけど、はい、それによく昔から使われてわるあのチーイリチーというお料理があったりそれから耳ですね、はい、耳皮刺身っていってあのいわゆる和え物とか酢の物にいたしまして大変酒の魚にいいと言われておりますけど、うん、それから足のいわゆる足ティビチこれもね長寿食にとってもいいというわけで大変これも昔からよく使われて今でもみんなよく食べてるものですか,ですから肉はもちろんのこと内臓はもちろんのこと耳から足からもう本当にねあの捨てるところなく本当に上手にあの使いこなしてるということはあの先祖の人たちの知恵というのをね非常に素晴らしいなという私でもよく思ってるんですけども。By touching upon the history, music, and lifestyle. Here's what scholars, journalists, and economists from Okinawa have to say on the subject. I think that the word is a word that 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 is a 本当に当時テレビもラジオもないですのであまり聞かないですねうちじゃ方言ばかり使って学校で標準語使えなさいって言うと無理でやはり地元の文化は方言じゃないと表せないこともございますのでこれはやはり自分のところあのその高い文化を持つという気概がありますからシェイクをしなかったと思いますただ沖縄の人はあまり標準語になじまなくてハワイに直接行って逆に英語の方を早く学んだということも言われておりましてですね非常に言葉じゃ苦労したと内地の人と接種する時ですね他府県人と広島とか山口から来た人と話をする時できなかったとですから沖縄の人は無口だと言われます決して無口じゃなくて沖縄じゃ方言じゃ本当にベラベラといくらでもよくしゃべるんですねそういった点じゃあの方言に非常にみんなあの大事にしてアイデンティティと言いますかね自分を存在する意義として方言を当時みんな大切に思っていたが上からのお指揮者で標準語しなさいというのはちょっと形式的でそれが成功しなかった原因だと思います。それとも終わりと無関係な方なんですが、うんね、この内南中の心。まあ確かにその復帰あとですね、はい、沖縄の政党というのはねみんなそれぞれ本土の中央政党にね、はいうん、系列化、はい、アフリエイトされましたね。はいえー、従いましてまあそれぞれのそのイデオロギーだとかあるいは政策というのはね、はい、割とまあ中央政党のそれに準じてはおりますけれどもねただ沖縄の人はですねその政党よりもね人物本位に選ぶんですよ選挙の場合にはね人物を選ぶんですよ、はいはい、したがいましてねその人物その選挙の場合にはね候補者はですね、うん、その政策よりもねその<笑>沖縄の内南中の心これを代表しですね,そうですね特にあの違います天狗はね、まあ、本土ではあの非常に政治家のね接種生、うんうんね、政治家の子供がね、はい、もうほとんど自動的に政治家になるんでしょ、えーはい、沖縄でそれ拒否しますね沖縄でそれできないですだからその点では沖縄の方がね本土よりも民主的であると、ね、<笑>いうことを言えますねでそ,うでそれはさっきあの言葉の問題と同じようにああの我々はあの日本人であるけれども沖縄人であるでその沖縄人という非常にアイデンティティの問題え歌や踊りを沖縄から取ってしまったら沖縄人ではないと
いうようなやはりそういう説明はつきにくいですけれども文化の底の底の一番底の部分にやはり歌や踊りというものがあるんじゃないでしょうか。The Hawaii Okinawans are loyal to their group and identity, but the sense of pride stems from different reasons. This group of Okinawans that came, they were,、uh, and let's say it, they were, they were, they were, as they came in, they, although they came in as Japanese, but they were kind of a second class uh, 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 part of the Japanese. And,、uh, And they were treated so, as such. But、uh, because of this, these people got together and collectively got strong because of their, their diversity and their treatment that they were getting. So today, they have very much they have an influence on、uh, our, our multi ethnic society. And, and because of the demand of uh, the, uh, the present day uh,、um, people here in Hawaii, Hawaii they, The Okinawans is almost like a separate a culture in itself. They all not only suffered, I mean, they really, all the cultural differences,、uh, the language barriers, I mean, they really, really persevered with all these handicaps that they came across, not knowing what to expect here. Well, I think if you look back at the history, you know, there was a lot of hardship.、Uh, they had to stick together to, to,、uh, to overcome,、uh, you know, like when our grandparents came coming to this foreign country. Uh, they, 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 they couldn't speak the language,、uh, they were not making enough money, so they had to stick together. So they helped each other with frenos and building houses, those things. And I think that's kind of carried over. And the other thing, too, when you're number one, you try harder. <laughs> so、uh, I guess, you know, among the Japanese community, they were looked down upon, so they had to stick together. Dr. Tomonori Ishikawa commented that ironically, the Okinawan immigrants who spoke Hogan dialect could not converse with their Naichi counterparts. And instead of learning to speak Japanese properly, went directly into learning English. There may be a connection between studying English to overcome language barriers and adapting quickly to American society during and after the war. The quick assimilation into mainstream America and Hawaii paved the way for many of the successful local businesses. Because the way I look at the situation,、um, at、uh, the success of the UAA now, Perhaps the key to this was that they converted to English very readily and handed over everything to the younger generation. That,、uh, that's a, a basic key as to why we've、uh, thrived over the past 10 years or so. But then they were willing to step aside, let the young folks come in, and the young folks came in with their energy and their creative ideas. But the young folks didn't just run off. And turn their backs on the Isseis, we always had them as advisors because they had the years and years of experience. We would always check with them. What do you think about this? Are we stepping on people's toes if we do it this way? What do you think? Is it green light, red light? What do you think? Which should we go? And they would always give us a, the, their, their sincere advice and their support. Whatever we decided to do, they always backed us up. So it was a good team, good combination of age and experience, youth, ideas, and energy. Is this true also in Okinawan businesses? Is that how an Okinawa family and an Okinawan business would be run? Well, the Okinawans here in Hawaii are known for their small business、uh, successes. And from what I can ob- observe in, in talking directly with、uh, Albert Tiruya, the Tiruya brothers of Times, and the Higa brothers of Zippies, and the Bob Tyras, and, and others like that,、uh, there has always been、uh, an ability, number one, To work hard as an individual, and, and that includes your family members, towards、uh, making the business prosper. But then you had people outside of your family that were also supportive of what you were doing. They go and shop at your, your stores, they buy, they eat your restaurant food like that. They're supportive. No one ever tried to pull another business family down. Throughout this series, we have explored various aspects of the Okinawan history and culture. So now we ask, what does it mean to be Okinawan? And how do Okinawans view their culture? You know, I'm going to say this. 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 I'm going to 
その一言で言いますとね思いやりの心と言いますかねあるいはそのギブアンテイクじゃないハスピタリティの心ですね,ですねこれじゃないかなと私は思っておるんですけどね,、はい、そうですね何か目的があって親切にするんじゃなくてほんの心からそうですあの県民同士そしてまたそあのよそから来た人たちの歓迎部位って、はい、また本当に特別なものなんですね。うん、そ,のそ,のですねそれはですねあの実は<笑>、えー、かつて昔そのバジルホール艦隊がね来た時にもそうでしたねあるいはペリルテイクが来た時もねああの日本の方はね、はい、あれ拒否しましたでしょ、えー、ところが沖縄の方はね心から歓迎しましたねあ、まあ、そういうことだとかその後またこの薩摩がね、はい、沖縄に武力侵入した時にもね、えー、そのまあある意味この目には目をじゃなくてねまさにその無抵抗の抵抗と言いますかね、うんうん、むしろその笑顔とね、はい、優しさで対応したことによってね自らを防衛したとこういう歴史の積み重ねがありますね今でもですね本土の方がいわゆるその縦社会ですね、はい、競争社会カンピチティブ社会ですね、えーはいはい、ですけれども沖縄の方はね横社会ですよ、うん、すなわちそのお互いにその協調するあるいはコアプライチブソサイティですねそういう違いがありますね。そうですね。But I think more important than all of these things, I think you have to remember, you always have to be thankful to your parents and your grandparents, and I hope that Yonsei and the Gosei people will not forget that the fighting spirit, yeah, and sticking together to help each other out. Yeah, we need to be reminded of the hard work、uh, that brought us to where we are, because we didn't make Uh, we didn't get to where we are alone. We got to where we are because of our parents, our grandparents, and our great grandparents. I really am proud to be Okinawan because to me, thank you, because to me, Okinawan is synonymous with hard work and generosity and hospitality.、Uh, it's synonymous with loyalty and good sense of humor, a love for life. The Okinawan community is now basking in the success of the grand opening of the Hawaii Okinawa Center. Now that this project has been completed, what does the future hold for the community? But I think as they become more successful and become more comfortable,、uh, I don't, it, you know, it, it may not. I mean, although people will still be proud of their heritage, I don't know if that bonding is going to be that close because, you know, as people get more affluent and,、uh, you know, like my son or, or my daughter, or maybe people like your age,、uh, Don't know so much about what really happened, and for them it's history. And so I don't think they'll have that same feeling like maybe the second generation, or, or and to some degree, you know, the third generation, our generation. I think it'll change. Do you have a hard time attracting young people into the UOA? Fortunately for us,、um, we haven't had that problem. Young people like to have fun, and they, they like to have fun in a way which is active. And like us older folks, We kind of like to have fun. We're sitting around and, and joking and, and having fun in a kind of a sedate kind of way. Regarding the young folks, you have to provide programs that'll make them feel happy and, and get them into competitive.、Uh, but then also active type programs, our sports programs, for example, softball, volleyball,、uh, bowling, golf, like that, you know, just attract the young Okinawans into the organization. And at that point, you start playing the Okinawan music and you perform the Okinawan dancers and you turn them on into the culture, which is one of the primary reasons why、uh, the UOA exists. Perpetuate, promote the Okinawan culture. You don't do it first, maybe with young folks. You get them involved in activities that they're familiar with, that,、uh, that they like, and then slowly expose them to the culture, the language. And fortunately for us, it's working out. Beginning to see、uh, research. Finally, We asked UH Ethnic Studies professor Dr. Franklin Odo to comment on the future of the Okinawan community. On where the Uchinanchu in Hawaii are headed. From my interviews with local Okinawans, it's obvious that poverty, discrimination, hardship are the elements that brought the UOA together. Now, in the 90s, the Yonsei Okinawans are being educated at the best schools, the Nisei Sansei are living in the high priced neighborhoods. Won't this newfound affluence change some of the loyal feelings towards being Uchinanchu?、Mm. They might, and, and, I, and I think you're right. Some of the, one of the ways in which the 
motivations came about, you know, in terms of uh, bringing people together was um, overcoming the prejudice and discrimination and poverty. But I don't believe that that's the only kind of thing involved, that there's a separate need that human beings have to um, have a sense of place, have a sense of family, um, have a sense of community. And so no matter how wealthy people are, it's, as, I guess the analogy is like having the daughters of the American Revolution. Mm. Yes. Who, who people descended the rock, descended from the Puritans and the Pilgrims, they they're very proud of that background. They're the wealthiest people in the country. You see, mm -hmm. I I, th I think in a way that um, it'll be like going to church. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> right. It might for many people it will become more formal and less meaningful maybe, but uh, on the other hand, you know there are white people in, in our country who really take a, a distinct pride in tracing their family and their traditions back to the Mayflower. And it may be we'll, we'll have um, folks that are uh, middle class and affluent and um, well educated who will also then be uh, proud to have had um, their ancestors come out of plantation work or be entrepreneurs, you know? operating ofuro and uh, manju shops and stuff. I don't see why that's... I don't believe that the ethnic pride and the ethnic, this feeling of um, participating in the ethnic community uh, will diminish. I think in the foreseeable future, you know, will continue. If the future is as good to the local Okinawans as the recent past has been, one can only expect for this ethnic group to grow and strengthen further. For years, the Okinawan culture has been an important facet of our local culture. Now, with the materialization of the Hawaii Okinawa Center, the Okinawans have a tangible reminder of what their ancestors sacrificed in order to provide a better life for future generations. On behalf of Joanne Ninomiya and the staff of JN Productions, we would like to congratulate the Okinawans of Hawaii for all of their past accomplishments and wish them the best of luck in their future endeavors. <laughs>